It's been a week plus of controversy surrounding the stretch of Mass Ave in the South End, known as Methadone Mile. As you've likely seen, the Boston Police Department has conducted a series of raids they've dubbed Operation Clean Sweep, which they started after a police officer was apparently attacked with a metal pipe while walking in the area. This area has become a haven for crime, clearly without recourse, and is based on neglect from the city. If a trained deputy sheriff cannot walk to work safely, I'm particularly concerned with the residents and civilians of this area. That area came to be known as Methadone Mile because of the many methadone clinics where addicts come for treatment, and the raids have sparked significant controversy among those speaking out. Suffolk County DA Rachel Rollins, who joins me now. It's nice to see you again. The uh, mayor said this was not a sweep. You don't agree, correct? Well, it was titled Operation Clean Sweep, so... But, but I mean, beyond the nomenclature, the police also say they just targeted violent criminals and those without standing warrants. Yeah. They're wrong? Um, well, there, many of the people that they did uh, arrest had those things, but as a result of what we just saw, uh, there's a small handful of people that engaged in violence. They will be held accountable, but... When we use words like sweep and engage in behaviors where an entire group of people, irrespective of what their involvement was, are arrested, we're going to get some people that might simply just be homeless or might simply have a substance use disorder or uh, be suffering from a mental uh, illness. And we've seen that, that some of the individuals were charged simply with possession, no criminal record whatsoever. Those people, I still believe, need treatment and don't need to go to jail. How many people were arrested altogether? 34? A pro yeah. 34. How many of them under your policy that everybody at home has l not learned about from you during the campaign since will not be charged with anything, will get some sort of diversionary care? So I think... We are still looking at all of that right now. They have not all been arraigned uh -huh. yet. Um, and what I'm finding is that many of them were arrested for a warrant. So, for example, they were brought to another jurisdiction to stand and be heard for that warrant. I have no say in what's happening there. I will tell you I attended three arraignments, Jim, uh, all for the individuals, one that tried to steal the car afterwards and two that we allege uh, engaged in the violence. They were both held accountable and held on bail. Yeah, by the way, there's a photograph that a lot of people have looked at and been appalled by of a wheelchair uh, in the back of a garbage truck. And my understanding is police have said, or someone in the city has said, uh, it was there because it was covered with blood and feces. Do you have any idea what the truth is, where the truth lies here? Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard the commissioner say that I have no reason to believe he's lying, but I also just left a meeting right now with, um, you know, people from the Boston Users Union and many of the other organizations that are hands on the ground, boots on the ground, right there on the mile, and they're telling a different story than that. So what I can tell you um, is it's often something in between and my hope is that if, if that wheelchair was thrown away, that we are looking at getting this individual another wheelchair. Did you, you met with Commissioner Gross about this thing? Of course. I mean, I speak meeting, to Commissioner Gross. But about this in particular, did you have a meeting in the minds at the end of the meeting? Um, yeah, I believe we actually do because... He, he fully believes as well, cuffs as a last resort is what he loves to say. The individuals that are targeting this population of people that are there going to get treatment, you bet we need to focus on them. I think there's a lot of people, though, Jim, that are, are questioning why it took a Suffolk County corrections officer getting attacked mm -hmm. to do something down there when we've had a problem in that area for quite some time. And I just believe that we should be getting people treatment. If they're violent, I will have no problem mm -hmm. holding them accountable and removing them. But there's a lot of people that weren't violent, Jim. They were charged with simply possessing. So when you say you had agreement with Gross, just one more question. Does that mean he agrees that they arrested people they should not have arrested to begin with? I don't know whether he agrees with that. What I can tell you is if they're charged with simple possession and they don't have a violent uh -huh. criminal record, I have looked in the, in the commissioner's eyes and spoken with the mayor numerous times to say, my policy would, I would want to try to get them treatment rather than arraigning them. You know, speaking of uh, campaign pledges that you've honored, you said that an officer involved shootings where deadly force was involved. You're going to have outside panels look of four citizens. Mm -hmm. Is anybody else in the country do this, by the way? Do no, you? not that we know of. And you implement, I think the first time was, was it in March with, I think his name was uh, Kasim Karim? That was February 22nd. February. And what's the status of that one? So we are still investigating that. Um, 
We are waiting for uh, some uh, the autopsy um, and some other information from the um, medical examiner's office. But we have been in contact with his family. Uh, we have also been in contact, of course, with the officer's family, who we understand Officer Whalen has is having a speedy recovery. He was actually injured in that encounter uh -huh. as well, and we wish him well. So, and by the way, the reason I brought it up is because every police officer shot and killed a suspect in Revere, same sort of situation. I don't understand. Do the do the civilians make the ultimate determination rather than staff in your office? And the reason behind this, let me put words in your mouth and correct me if I'm wrong, is because your prosecutors work with the cops every single day and there's Absolutely. at least an appearance of some sort of inappropriate. Absolutely. So what we did, Jim, was we set it up with a for retired Superior Court judge, mm -hmm. the former head of Middlesex and Suffolk County's uh, homicide unit, uh, who's now a criminal defense attorney. We have the head of my state police unit um, on the Boston Police officer involved shootings and we're going to have a BPD office detective with respect to the one where it occurred by an Everett police officer um, and then we have a woman who uh, is the head of a health clinic and what they do is they help me um, investigate what it is that occurred we are presented information ultimately the decision lies with me but they have the ability to ask whatever questions they want and to guide this investigation to make sure it's thorough and complete i'm going to make a suggestion to them but it's ultimately my decision but i weigh heavily on what it is that they say but you haven't made any decisions in None, any of these cases yeah. yet and i inherited by the way i'm sorry i inherited three when i took office um that were approximately two years old that we're going to be resolving i hope quickly fair enough back in july globe review found that the current da's office dismissed 40 percent more cases than under the previous administration reporters andrea estes and shelly murphy highlighted one deal in particular the office cut with a man accused of attacking a woman while she was walking her dog in charlestown resulting in a traumatic brain injury. Here's what the district attorney said at the time in defense of that deal. I am told that the exact same offer was made to this defendant under the Conley administration as we did. We just upped it by demanding he give this victim $5,000 restitution. Ultimately, neither of those assertions is accurate, correct? Well, certainly the assertion that I was told and it was not a good information, that is accurate. Um, we as, as a result of a judge asking more information, we ended up getting a $5,000 uh, restitution as well. But who initiated that, you or the judge? Well, I believe, I believe the judge would say that they did, but we came forward um, and got more than what it was originally proposed. This, this, it, it was accurate that that was the information you had, is what you just said, but the underlying information was inaccurate about uh, what Conley yeah, yeah. had offered. Yeah, words, yeah. Words, so what I am saying is I issued immediately a statement saying, that was not accurate what I said. Did you approve the deal in this case? Were you involved no, in this? No, not at all. Not at all. You didn't even know about it till after I, the fact. The moment I learned about this deal was when the Globe called about it. And when you, on the day you said to the Globe that what you had said was not accurate, have you called the victim in this case yet or offered to meet with her? Or why I, not? Well, honestly, Jim, because I'm, I've handled probably five homicides since I've been on the show with you. We've had an officer-involved shooting in Everett and Revere. We are dealing with matters uh, all the time that I am, you know, just left a meeting with about 15 people that are actively involved in the Operation Clean Sweep. So m my, my response is that if that victim wants to meet with me, they can reach Should out, reach and, out and, and I would... But, you, but you did have time. You tweeted out, I think on the same day as that Globe story ran, this story from the Charlestown Patriot Bridge, which is much less sympathetic to the accuser the victim, and much more sympathetic to the perpetrator. Why, why would you do that? Why it's you... not. It, what, what I'm saying, Jim, is when you have a Suffolk County jury and you, I think what happens is people vilify defendants and glorify victims, and oftentimes those things aren't true, right? And so what I am telling you is that we made the right decision here that I will, I will never back down from. Um, whether a previous administration offered it or not, um, this was not a, you know, we've, we've discussed the facts of this case, but what I will say is I was not given accurate information. I'm never going to decline. After the fact, after the fact. 
after the deal had been cut, you're saying? Oh, yeah. I didn't know about okay. the deal, right? So we handle 35,000 cases a year. I'm rarely, if ever, told about some of the district court cases unless there's a public records request or something happens there. We have now changed that. So if there are things that we've put in place as a result of this, certainly. But who I am is if I'm loud about the things I believe in, if what I said was not accurate, I'm going to say it's not accurate. But I want to remind you, the best baseball teams uh, in Major League Baseball lose 54 games a year. So we're not going to get it right every time, but I do believe this time we did. One last thing before you go. Speaking of losing, two uh, guys who used to work for uh, the uh, mayor were uh, convicted the other day in the Boston Colon case. Yeah. It was a federal case, obviously not a, not in your office. Yeah, my Even previous office. It happened in, office. in Boston. The one thing there is total agreement on, there's a lot of controversy about whether or not this is fair or not. Uh, one thing is agreed upon that there was no personal benefit received by either of the two men who face up to 20 years in jail. Do you think that's a just verdict? Um, I... Why do you always do this to me? Because Can you're I, an open person. Yes. I know you'll answer I, honestly. I believe that if you did not benefit anything from uh, from doing this, what, what was the intent there? And I think this is an incredibly complicated case that had a history with Judge Sorokin um, and, you know, additional Im information or jury instructions given, I think a lot of people were surprised by the verdict. And we'll see what happens in the future, whether the First Circuit affirms it or whether the judge is going to do anything different. But I can say I know one of those individuals well. I know him to be a good person. And, you know, the type of person I am is I'm going to be there for you no matter what it is you're accused of. So just to be clear, 15 final seconds, had this been in your juris jurisdiction, had you determined that there was no personal benefit, you wouldn't have prosecuted the case? I'm not going to talk about that. What I'm going to say is I honor what it is the jury found. Sometimes they get it right, sometimes they don't. Hopefully all of what we're discussing shows how hard this job really is. You know, even great baseball teams lose 54 That's games. Right, you ever hear Jim. that? Rachel Rollins, it's good to see you. Take Thanks care. so much for your time. D.A. Rollins.